Get me. From Studio A in Arcata, behind the Redwood Curtain, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast, soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcast. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's this episode's host from up the coast, the man who puts the X in Xbox and the tie on antisocial... Comedy Soundcast Soundcaster, Tyson Saner. Saner. Insaner. Insaner. Salute, Tonist. It's me, Tyson Saner, your host for this episode of Suckatash that numbers 282. I had a couple episodes off recently, so executive producer Mark Hershon, with whom I share hosting duties, stepped up to bring you a fresh show two weeks in a row. Thank you kindly, sir. The first, episode 280, featured an interview with the hilarious Dana Gould, who, aside from being a comedian most of his life and writing for The Simpsons, amongst other credits, has a great web-based series on his YouTube channel called Hangin' with Dr. Z, in which he plays Dr. Zaius from the original Planet of the Apes movies, now hosting his own TV talk show. You heard me correctly. Check that out when you've got the time. It's pretty funny. And for last week's episode, 281, Mr. Hershon brought you a quartet of clips from the never-featured-on-Suckatash-before soundcast known as B3F, Carefully Reckless, Everything is Alive, and The Amelia Project. This is also an episode that you should check out at your earliest convenience. On this particular episode of Suckatash, I've clipped three soundcasts for you to experience. They're called My Work Life, Soda Jerker on Songwriting, and Rice to Meet You. I've also got an advert from our longtime fake sponsor, Henderson's Pants, for you here somewhere. So, how have you been? Crazy year, right? It's hard to believe another one is almost over. But I tend to feel that way at the end of every week. So, that particular shade of incredulity is a familiar sensation for me. I'd say, I don't know where the time goes, but that's not true. I do know where time goes. It goes away. And while you're pondering that one, here's another thing for you that is also not true. I believe there are two types of people. People who believe in dichotomies and people who don't know what they are. Onward to the clips. Starting off in the number one position tonight is a show called Fuck My Work Life by J and K. I would like to point out that it's actually a capital F, two asterisks, and a K, and then My Work Life. Which, actually, if you search that on the iTunes app, it does not come up immediately. But, if you do type in My Work Life, you are likely to get the correct show as an option. The show description says, Sharing your workplace stories with a few of our own, so we can all laugh or cry together. The clip I've selected is from an episode that posted October 20th in 2021, called Podcast Time Travel. In its description, it says, J and K are all by themselves again this week, and they are officially calling out Coors Light to become a sponsor. They're sharing listener workplace stories, along with some of their own, and debuting the new Rant Line segment. This clip features a personal workplace story from J. Okay, so we have a couple listener stories. I have a an interesting workplace-related article that was sent to me, but you said that you... You thought of a a workplace story from your past that would be fun to tell something about a furniture store? Oh, yes. Do you want to tell that now or do you want to wait till later? No, I'll tell it now. Okay. So there was a, there was a point in my life where I lived in Las Vegas and I needed a way from Las Vegas because, you know, it's crazy when you go there as a tourist, but it's also pretty. As a a what? Tourist. Tourist? Oh, sorry. (laughs) Is that am I am I sounding like George W. saying Turst. Nu- nuclear? <laughs> I'm tourists. It's crazy when you go there as a tourist, but it's also it, it can get pretty crazy as a local. I would hate to live there. Oh yeah, yeah. I would never. I would never go back there. I don't even like to go back to visit there. I know because I've seen everything, and you know. Even though they constantly upgrade it, whatever, we're getting off topic. So I moved to, can you guess, Utah. That's like the exact opposite yeah. of Las Vegas. Yeah, the exact opposite. <laughs> and when I, when I moved to Utah, I applied for a 
position at a furniture store working in the warehouse. And the warehouse was pretty big because, you know, it was Southern Utah. So it was pretty, uh, it was St. George. So it wasn't completely desolate, but there weren't big box furniture stores there. Was it you just know, like a like not, a family owned furniture place, or was it no like no? A, it was it was like a, a chain it, it was furniture row was the place, and it was. I think it's just a Utah thing. No, it's here. Is it furniture yep. row? Furniture. They own a fucking NASCAR team. Oh wow! Yeah, I've never heard they're of them big. before. They're big. <laughs> they're they're all over. So this was like the opening of this place. They were building it when I applied. But they were finishing building it when I applied. And this was like the big thing. So the warehouse of this furniture store was huge. It was huge. And I worked in the warehouse. And, you know, we had the forklift because there was like three different levels of headboards and and footboards and this sleeping set and these couches and this and it was all in this warehouse and we had these racks and when they opened they had these racks completely full there was no we had to shuffle stuff around when we would get shipments to be able to try to fit stuff in Mm -hmm. and i think that they thought that Everyone would come and everyone would buy shit. And in the beginning, people did, but then it kind of died out. So they stopped ordering stuff. So as stuff went out, there were empty spaces Mm -hmm. in the racks. And me and this guy, I forget his name. This was like 15 years ago, at least, at least maybe closer to 20. One of us would grab the forklift and... We would have nothing to do. So we would take the forklift over and the other one would lift the forklift up and we would stand on the the forks of Mm -hmm. the forklift. Sounds safe. Well, I mean, it's what we did when we would grab stuff down. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like if you have to go to the third tier to get a mattress or something down. You can't just put the forklift up there and the mattress just so magically falls it, on the forklift. It wasn't like, shit on pallets? No. Oh my God. No. So that's dangerous. <laughs> that shit would not fly now. Oh yeah, it would. I, I guarantee you it happens in every warehouse, everywhere. So we would go and we would go down the aisle with... One of us standing on the forklift, like on the forks, and we would move down the aisle. We'd find empty spots and we would move stuff around to make a huge empty spot. And then we would bring a mattress over and we would put the mattress in there and we would take naps. <laughs> and and like, On the like third level? I forget his name. I think his name was like Brian or something, something like that. Yeah. On the third, on the top level. And either I would lift him up and we'd put a mattress there and he would sleep there for like an hour. And then, you know, I'd I'd come get him because this was before cell phones. It it wasn't before cell phones, but it was when cell phones were in their infancy. There there was no smartphones. Yeah. There was the flip phones. So you, you couldn't really text like, hey, hours up. It's my fucking turn. Nap time's over. So. I would basically like get the, we would get the forklift, go up to that area and just kind of knock the forklift up against the side. To and, w- like wake and, him up? And it would wake him up. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's my story. Oh. <laughs> now you can find them on Good Pods, Podchaser, and all other major podcast platforms. Um, apparently they've also expanded their content to not only Twitter, but also TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, and the Twitter account is at FMWLPod. That is all lowercase FM, FMWLPOD. Also on that Twitter account, you can find their link tree that has all the other places they want you to look for them. In case you were wondering, other places you can listen to soundcasts are Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Audible, and Amazon, just to name a few. Next up tonight, 
Soda Jerker on Songwriting from Soda Jerker. In its show description, it says, Soda Jerker on Songwriting is a program devoted to the art and craft of songwriting. The show, created and hosted by the UK songwriting team, Soda Jerker, features interviews with some of the most successful songwriters and musicians in the world. And now for some additional information that I found on the website. Soda Jerker is a songwriting team from Liverpool in the United Kingdom, founded by co-writers Simon Barber and Brian O'Connor. Soda Jerker is the creative outlet for two friends raised on the celebrated songbooks of such luminaries as Lennon and McCartney, Backrack and David, Holland Dozier Holland, Goffin and King, and the Chic Organization. Like the professions from which they take their name, Soda Jerker use their hard-won skills to conjure artistry from the everyday. Their songs have been heard on radio stations around the world and on a number of film soundtracks. Simon and Brian are also the co-hosts of the Soda Jerker on Songwriting podcast, which I am clipping from. So, apparently, this is a bonus episode that I've decided to clip for you. Uh, it was posted on October 14th, 2021, and it's Giles Martin on remixing the Beatles. Its episode description says, October 15th, 2021 sees the release of a remix special edition of Let It Be, the final album by the Beatles. To celebrate the occasion, Simon and Brian sat down with the excellent Giles Martin to talk about his work remixing the Beatles at Abbey Road Studios the songwriting of Lennon and McCartney, his work on Peter Jackson's forthcoming documentary series, The Beatles Get Back, and memories of his father, Sir George Martin. And personally, I'm really looking forward to seeing the Get Back documentary, and I would have watched it sooner, but I have other things to do. So I will get to it as soon as possible, and if anybody cares, I'll let them know how I felt about it. But I can't imagine I'm not going to like it. <laughs> anyway. So when you mentioned about the different spaces that those songs were recorded in, when you go back to the tapes, are a lot of the effects and things printed to those tracks, or are you having to kind of go through old compressors and things like that as well? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it depends on the album. So let it be, there's not really effects on it anyway. The weird thing was actually when we, we remixed the whole of the rooftop concert for the film, so it runs from start to finish. And then we got the drum sound, and I said to Sam, Drums don't sound very good. And it was like, what was happening, I realised what was happening is Lynn Johns was EQing the stuff as it was going to tape, but live. And then I'm having to chase what he did, if that makes sense, because I've made it sound good, but he hasn't yet got to that EQ bit yet. So I've EQ'd it, and then he made it sound brighter, so I had to go and take the EQ down again, because he's obviously in a basement recording it live, and I'm in the studios mixing it. It's things <laughs> like that. It's kind of bonkers. But, yeah, the effects-wise... Um, it's easier for us, it's better for us if the effects aren't printed to tape, because then we can recreate them. And it's not complicated. We have all the gear at Abbey Road anyway. You know, we have all the stuff they recorded. And we do a lot of stuff virtually as well. I know that may upset people, but, you know, that's that's the way things are. But, you know, things like tape delays, we use we use a tape and a tape delay. ADT, which is artificial double track, and we do a lot of, actually, which is using a tape machine, a single playback head, and a very speed knob. That we'll do that for the Beatles. They didn't have to record double track vocals, even though they did, where you sing into a tape machine and your playback and your record head of this, this far apart. So you get a very, very small delay as the tape machine plays back. And then if you slow down the tape machine and speed it up, you get a chorusing effect as well. I mean, the way that I like to do things with the Beatles is that we tend to almost copy the mixes to a certain degree and then we'll embellish them, you know, because you want to make sure that you're not doing too much wrong if that makes sense right i learned this way back funny enough in love when i did love thing which is pre-sam and a guy called paul hicks i was working with and we mixed on the walrus and i just thought it just sounded amazing and i listened to the original and the original sounded much worse but much better <laughs> and what i mean by that it just sounded claustrophobic it sounded horrible it sounded like it but it was kind of cool mm. and that's the hard thing i did a remix goat's head suit by the stones and that's the same. It's like a slightly gnarly sounding record, and it kind of needs to be. If you make it sound too posh, it doesn't sound as cool. And so you have to bear all that stuff in mind when you're doing this stuff as well. And how much time will you spend on each track, typically? Five minutes. <laughs> no, I, was, <laughs> I was just done rubber soul before tea. Um, <laughs> no, it depends. You know, it, honestly, it depends. It depends. And it, it's things that you don't even take into account. Um, you're talking about a day at maximum, a track, less than that. Maybe. But then what happens is you go back 
like Long and Winding Road. Oh, because Phil Spector stuff, I've done Phil Spector stuff before, so this George Harrison film is called Living the Material World. Yeah. And I had to mix a bunch of George stuff, which is Phil Spector stuff for that. It's really hard because it kind of sounds big out of small objects, Phil Spector. That's what it's good at. You get like a, a little speaker and Phil Spector stuff sounds huge. You get it into a big space and it suddenly sounds small again because it's kind of like, it's slightly microphonic. So Long and Wider Road was a challenge. I think we mixed that nine times or eight times. So it depends. Like, I remember Day in the Life on Sgt. Pepper. That was my, I kept on going back and doing it. And that was because of the mono sounds so great because the drums, when they come through because of limiting, they suddenly bang through. And in stereo, you can't do that because the drums are on one side because it's a single track. Anyway, very boring. No, no. So you, you kind of, you, you're challenged with the beauty and the brilliance of what they did and what the engineers did and what the producers did. You know, that's the challenge. You're not challenged by the people that go, why the hell are you remixing this? You're in too deep by then anyway. You committed yourself. You're challenged by how brilliant the, some of the records sound. And when it comes to the stuff that's never before released, do you have more room for interpretation there? Yeah, in a way, yes and no. Um, I mean, way back when, way back when, when I sort of said to Apple, listen, I reckon I can chop up the tapes and create a Beatles show. It never happened. And they said, you've got, you know, Neil Aspinall said, you've got three months and I'm not going to pay you. And I did three months of work and then everyone liked it. And I was away in New York. And a friend of mine, this guy called Chris Sheldon, who's a producer, a really good mate of mine. I said, God, I've been asked to do Beatles stuff, and this is it. I mean, I'm not sure if I should do Beatles stuff. And he said, well, if you don't want to do it, I'll do it. You know, as simple as that, you know, you better realise your... So I'm very aware how lucky and humbling it is that people sort of rely on me and trust me to do this. And so when it comes to the outtakes, it's a very long answer for this question, I think it's important that I represent what I experience to people as much as I can. I kind of don't want to go, oh, this is what I think the outtakes should sound like. I want them to sound as much as me pressing play on a tape machine can be. I mean, I'll maybe balance stuff or maybe if there's just feedback on one track that blasts through everything, I might take it off. But apart from that, we really try and go, okay, this is what it's like Listen to the tapes. So you can follow the show on Twitter at SodaJerker. That is all lowercase, S-O-D-A-J-E-R-K-E-R. Simon Barber can be found on Twitter at all lowercase, S-I-M-O-N-B-A-R-B-E-R and also at simonbarber.com, all spelled the same way. And I mention that because Brian O'Connor can be found on Instagram at tinpanscally, which is all lowercase T-I-N-P-A-N-S-C-A-L-L-Y, but not on Twitter at this time for some reason under that same name. And also if you go to www.tinpanscally.com, spelled the same way, it redirects back to sodajerker.com. So keep that in mind when looking for the show. Honored friends, Bill Haywatt here for Henderson's innovation in trousers and pantaloons since 1896. In this great country, the pants you wear make a statement about where you stand, not just physically, but also on the very issues that shape us as a free and style-conscious people. Now it's easy to tell friends, family, co-workers, even anonymous passers-by how you feel about today's most important issues with Henderson's new Republican Fit Jeans. Republican Fit Jeans lean firmly but gently to the right and feature drastic cuts in the seat and thigh, while still responding Respecting your stomach's inalienable right to expand in our great nation's free market economy. Republican fit jeans are pro-life, pro-gun, and anti-immigration, but loose enough to let you enjoy giving a swift kick to the socialist big brother nanny state with every step you take. And if blue state politics are more to your liking, we also offer Henderson's new Democratic Fit Jeans. Democratic Fit Jeans lean gently but firmly to the left and feature a generous increase to your seat and thigh while still regulating your stomach's ability to monopolize surrounding body parts. Democratic Fit Jeans are pro-choice, pro-healthcare reform, and compostable, but tight enough to let you enjoy giving a swift kick to the fascist corporate corporate oligarchy with every step you take. In these troubled times, don't let your pants get caught on the fence. Let your fellow citizens know how you're voting with an uncompromising pair of Republican fit or Democratic fit jeans from Henderson's. Innovation in trousers and pantaloons since 1896. And now, back to more of Suck Attack. Thank you, Bill Haywatt. Wow, that is... That spot... 
And it's quite a few years old now. And a lot of that stuff is still true. Very strange. Finally in the program, Rice to Meet You from Nigel Ung and Evelyn Mock. Its show description says, A comedy podcast about Asian culture, hosted by two UK-based comedians, Nigel Ung and Evelyn Mock. Sometimes the Internet's favorite uncle, Uncle Roger, makes an appearance. Yes, for those of you who did not know, Uncle Roger is a character uh, who is on YouTube. Uh, among other things, he's critical of the way other chefs make certain types of food. For example, Uncle Roger didn't really care for the way Rachel Ray uh, made pho. Um, the clip I've selected is from August 24th, 2021, from a show called We're Becoming White Middle Class People. In the episode description, it says, This week, Nigel tells us about his visit to Soho Farmhouse. Evelyn talks about her first on-screen makeout, and our hosts get into how much they actually need rice. The clip I have selected contains a portion of the Soho Farmhouse discussion. To me, achieving goals equals joy. So that's, that's all I think about. Very simple okay. life. And uh, I, will, I spent my weekend at Soho Farmhouse. Oh, you my know, God. I, I don't think a lot. I think very little. But I try to enjoy my life. And so Farmhouse is one of those things. Yeah. You don't need a shield. Of... You don't need a shield or coping mechanism at Soho Farmhouse. No? And the thing is, we, we talked about cringe stuff last mm -hmm. week or two weeks ago. Uh, your stories about Soho Farmhouse oh. were so cringe. It was they so They were so nice. cringe. Cringe, is, put up, like, cringe can be he, nice sometimes, you know. He put up a story of uh, the cabin that you were oh, at or whatever. The cabin. <sighs> and then he just put, if I could wake up here every day. I was like, ew. That mm. is very cringe. I'm hearing very a lot cringe, of Nigel. jealousy from you. I'm hearing a lot of jealousy. <laughs> hearing a lot of envy and jealousy from everyone. I went to a lake this week, so I'm good. No, I'm Listen, <laughs> Soho Farmhouse. If you don't know, listeners outside the UK, it's a very fancy members only resort very in fancy Cotswolds, very rural oh it's in Cotswold. yeah yeah beautiful oh. a 40 45 minute drive from oxford oh i see and it's just beautiful it, you're out in nature but you're in a oh heated pool oh yeah but you God. literally the pool oh heated pool outdoors fancy food trucks a hot tub i didn't get to use a hot tub because it was all booked out and then you stay in you stay in these like, like um in a field somewhere they build this little cabin they call them piglets you know, this piglet. Little, yeah, they call. I, I, we stay in Piglet Twenty One. That's a room name. You stay in this oh little God. cabin. It's just beautiful in there. The architecture, the the, the interior designs are all very well thought out. It's very farmhousey, of course, and it's just a yeah, beautiful, beautiful holiday. Love it, love it. You're be you're becoming more and more middle class white. You're becoming so middle class white. Listen, that's not a bad thing to aspire to. It's a okay. comfort. Why? It's uncomfortable. Why is it uncomfortable podcast? to see your friend doing well? Why is it uncomfortable? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> I loved it. And, uh -huh. uh, yeah, the, the, the pool was heated. It was outdoors. And literally the pool, the only thing separating the pool from the river is just like a, like a concrete block. So you can just, when you're in the pool, you can bring drinks in there. Uh, my favorite. Mm -hmm. I talked about this a lot. You can bring drinks into the pool. And then you can touch the lake. You can physically reach it and touch it, and you can see ducks and people paddling the boats. Bye. Wait. Oh, I love it. Wait, so you're in a pool that is right next to a lake? Uh, that's a river, sorry, a river. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, but the pool is separated from the river because the pool is heated. Uh huh. Ah, heated to 30 degrees Celsius. <laughs> it's very comfortable. <laughs> and then it go in there. Oh, so nice. The ducks and nature. And they're playing that's nice hilarious. music. and. To be fair, everybody who goes there all kind of look the same, you know, the trendy uh -huh. media types, entertainment industry types. But uh -huh. it's actually kind of nice because they because everybody there is like relatively young and cool. They play like cool music, you know, because I've been to resorts, beach resorts, where they play shitty, that kind of music. But there uh -huh. they just play like chill, lo-fi indie kind of music, which is really oh nice. Gosh. Yeah, and we just chill. I just chilled there reading my book under a parasol. Oh. Under a parasol. A parasol. I loved it. This just all sounds. I just. I idyllic. think it's because idyllic is the word you're looking for. Idyllic. No, it just sounds really constructed and really like. Of course, it it's just constructed. <laughs> it's a resort. What do you want me to do? I hate nature. 
I would hate nature and yeah, the bears out yeah. there. There's bears and deer and foxes who will come fuck you up. I hate nature. <laughs> Please construct some shit. Construct some nice nature for me. Well, I mean, it just sounds constructed in the way that Soho House is constructed. This thing of like the seemingly, mm-hmm. the, the you know, the... Um, kind of like seeming of of opulence or doing well or you know like oh it's so important that you're here you're so important and therefore you're here like that's the that's the vibe i get from soho farmhouse which i also get from soho house yeah there there is a little bit of that you don't have to participate in that first of all and well you kind of do by just being there yeah sure i enjoy it for the vibe because every resort i don't know if you know this but every resort has a vibe and uh-huh. as far as vibes go, the Soho House member vibes is like the least worst vibe. You know what I mean? Have you been to like is shit it? resorts where it's full of one star people or f- annoying families <laughs> and children crying? <laughs> you know, every resort has a vibe. And as far uh-huh. as vibe goes, this nonchalant, this displaying your, 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 your in the know, in the cool type vibe, not the worst thing. Not the worst vibe out there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can find episodes on YouTube as well that you can watch. And that is at YouTube on a channel called Rice to Meet You Pod. That is R-I-C-E-T-O-M-E-E-T-Y-O-U-P-O-D. And just recently on October 18th of 2021, the show announced that it was going on hiatus in an episode uh, appropriately titled Hiatus. But in the meantime... You can follow them on Instagram at Rice to Meet You Pod, spelled the same way as before. Nigel Ung is on Twitter at capital M-R, capital N-I-G-E-L, capital N-G. His Instagram is exactly those things except all lowercase. And Evelyn Mock can be found on Twitter at capital E-V-E-L-Y-N, capital M-O-K. And you can also find her on Instagram in the same manner as described before. Since they do have a Patreon, but they've apparently, I believe they were saying, I did listen to the episode in which they announced their hiatus, and I believe they said they were going to be pausing their Patreon. However, you can still look for it and find all the information that exists there, uh, as far as I know, at patreon.com forward slash rice to meet you pod. And that brings us merrily along to the end of the first episode of December, number 282. Next week, Mark Hirshman will likely have episode 283 all ready to go for your listening pleasure. In case you did want to listen to our archive of episodes, you could probably find them on whichever service you're listening to us on now. And you can definitely find them on the show's archive built up over the last 10 years over at www.suckatashow.com. If you like video games and the concept of watching other people playing them, you can find a lot of content of exactly that over at my YouTube channel under a collective banner of content called Tyson Saner Gamer. Tweet me at REVT23, that is all lowercase REVT and the numeral 2 and the numeral 3, and let me know if you do become a viewer of that and or a listener of this. If you become a viewer of this, which is made possible by audio only aside from limited imagery episodes being posted on the YouTube channel uh, called Mark Hershon by, you guessed it, Mark Hershon, which by the way is spelled capital M-A-R-C, capital H-E-R-S-H-O-N. Any way you find us, any way you experience us, I do hope your experience is an interesting one, like in a good way. Tweet the show at Suckatash Show, which is capital S-U-C-C-O-T-A-S-H, capital S-H-O-W, and let us know. Additional info as to how to contact us to follow in the end announcements. Thank you for listening. Be decent to each other, and if anyone asks if you have heard anything interesting... Or if you independently come to the realization that you would like to volunteer that information to someone you believe would be receptive to it, won't you please pass the Succotash? You've been listening to Succotash, the comedy soundcast soundcast, with your host, Tyson Saner. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuccotashShow.com. On Spotify. On Stitcher. On iHeartRadio. On YouTube. On SoundCloud. And wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and 
downloaded or downloaded. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Succotash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at tyson at succotashshow.com or call into the Succotash Skype line at our toll call number 818 921 7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Succotash. Succotash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Saner. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Succotash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Succotash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.